A portion of this video has been sponsored by Squarespace. This is a gearbox I designed a few videos ago. It can be almost entirely 3D printed and uses a stacking planetary gear set. This means you can just add or subtract sections to change the gear ratio. Basically, more stages equals more torque. In this design, I have a 5010 brushless motor built into the back housing. This made the design very compact and can be controlled using pretty much any hobby ESC. Now in my last video with this gearbox, I did some preliminary testing. It was by no means accurate and we didn't actually find the breaking point of the gearbox. To truly test the limits of this gearbox, I bought this 1800 watt brushless motor, which is normally meant to go in go-karts. This motor is rated for 3.7 newton meters of torque, and that's without any gear reduction. That means that with the 64 to 1 reduction of this gearbox, it should, in theory, have about the same torque as a Honda Civic. Will it hold up to this much torque though? We'll find out. Now clearly, this gearbox was not meant to go on this motor. That means we're going to need to make some sort of adapter piece. Luckily, this isn't too hard to do and can quickly be printed and test fit. The other integration challenge is that the sun gear was meant to mount onto the old brushless motor. To solve this, I have all of these parts. I machined an adapter plate from aluminum, resin printed this spacer, and then bought this coupler for the shaft online. Everything gets assembled and then it is ready to get put on the shaft. Keeping in mind, of course, sometimes a few gentle words of persuasion are needed to get everything to fit together. To drive this massive motor, we need an equally massive ESC. Just look at this thing compared to the ESC from the previous motor. That's pretty crazy. You may have also noticed that this motor has 8 wires coming out of it. That is because some of them go to hall sensors within the motor. These hall sensors tell the ESC what position the motor is at, so it can deliver the right signals to produce the most torque even at low RPM. Brushless motors without these hall sensors tend to have very low torque at low RPMs. This is something that the last test setup really suffered from. But this time, I can assure you, the gearbox will not win this battle. It also runs on 48 volts, so I will be using two 6S batteries in series. This setup makes this very terrifying spark when you connect the batteries, but I'm sure that'll be fine. So I wired everything up for the first time, which means we're ready to give it a test. Before we get any further, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're looking to set up a custom website, Squarespace makes it really easy. They have tons of templates to choose from, and they make it so simple to embed videos, pictures, and even a web store into your site. The end results always look really professional and can be made and updated very quickly. If you make projects like me, a website could be a great place to show off your work or even sell it. Squarespace offers free trials so you can get started designing. And then when you want to make a purchase, you can use my link, which is squarespace.com slash microrectin or use code microrectin for 10% off your first purchase. Now back to the video. So everything spins, which is good, but we still need to be able to measure the torque. To do this, I have to build a test stand. So I mounted the motor to a piece of plywood with a few bolts. And then to hold the gearbox in place, I printed this mount. It sort of clamps down on the outer housing of the gearbox and prevents it from twisting. This was also my first time using these heat stake inserts, and frankly I'm a huge fan. They worked really well. I could then mount a 100mm arm to the output hub. This will let us have a known length for when we're calculating the max torque later. Okay, the first thing I noticed is that this thing is fast. Like, really fast. So let's see what type of useful things we can do with it. 
And when I mean useful, I mean let's just zip tie a knife to it and see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? First up, let's see if it can cut a pepper. Okay, well that didn't work very well, but it did cut a little bit, so in my book, that's a success. How about a tomato? Oh my god, that went everywhere. Okay, now that was epic, but let's see what it does to this potato. If this was someone's hand, that would hurt a lot. Okay, so we've seen it destroy some veggies, which is cool, but let's actually measure what it takes to break this thing. So I rigged up this load cell and wired up an Arduino to log all the data. So without further ado, let's break this thing. Oh yeah. Now that all happened very fast, so let's play it back in slow motion with the data that got logged by the Arduino. The gearbox put out a peak of 42 newton meters of torque. For a 3D printed gearbox, that's actually pretty crazy. For reference, that means three of these would have about the same torque as a smart car. That's pretty awesome considering this entire thing is 3D printed. So let's take it apart and see what failed. That's not right. You guys should see inside this thing. That is not what it's supposed to look like in there. There's gears literally sideways. <laughs> oh my God. After prying loose the jammed gears, I could look at the first and second stages to see if there was any damage. I mean, this one's completely destroyed. But this one's not too bad. Feels a little gritty still. And then the first stage sun gear actually looks just fine. After looking through all the pieces, I've concluded that the output hub failed first. This is likely because it was printed out of resin, which made it pretty brittle. Then the third stage planets had nothing holding them in place, so they turned sideways, and from there everything got jammed up and destroyed itself. Now essentially this entire gearbox was printed in PLA, which is actually stronger than most people give it credit for, but let's try some other materials and see if we can get any more torque out of this design. I reprinted the output hub and the planet holders using PC which stands for polycarbonate. It's a pretty tough material and it should hopefully hold up better than the PLA and resin. The planet gears and the ring gears are still printed out of PLA+, plus, which is still a pretty strong material, so we'll see how they do. So with all the new parts printed, I can reassemble everything, and then we can do a second test. Three, two, one. Oh, I forgot to put the cover on. So with the new stronger parts, the max torque was now 55 newton meters, or 40 foot pounds. That's a 30% improvement from the last test. Now I was actually pretty skeptical of these results at first because that's a crazy amount of torque for a plastic gearbox of this size. So I did a quick verification test by just putting a weight on the load cell to validate that it was calibrated correctly. The load cell read out exactly 15 pounds, so I think it's safe to say the torque measurements were correct as well. I was really happy with how this gearbox performed, and the test exposed the weak point, which was the planet carrier. Both times it broke at the point where the planet is attached to the carrier. So let me know if you have any suggestions on how to make these stronger. I'm willing to try new materials, or maybe next time I'll just print it at 100% infill. But thank you everyone for watching. I have many more projects in the works, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.